Trump fires back at Joe Biden, files lawsuit to block release of admin's records, vexatious, illegal fishing expedition openly endorsed by Biden. Former President Trump fired back at current President Joe Biden and filed a federal lawsuit to block the Select Committee from obtaining his administration's records from the National Archives after Biden waived executive privilege. The committee's request amounts to nothing less than a vexatious, illegal fishing expedition openly endorsed by Biden and designed to unconstitutionally investigate President Trump and his administration, the lawsuit says. Our laws do not permit such an impulsive, egregious action against a former president and his close advisors. The lawsuit says it would make no sense for the committee's charter to encompass such an investigation. As has been widely reported, the FBI has not found evidence supporting the Democrats' contention that the events at the Capitol on January 6 were part of some organized plot to overturn. Adds by Riv Content. Likewise, as has been reported, the FBI has so far found no evidence that former President Donald Trump or people directly around him were involved in organizing the violence. If anything, the FBI has found that a small group of individuals planned to breach the Capitol prior to January 6. A subsequent joint report by the Senate Homeland Security and Rules Committees blamed intelligence and security failures, not the president or any of his advisors, for what happened at the Capitol that day. And Congress has already conducted a thorough investigation of this entire matter during its failed impeachment effort. Notably, the Biden administration's waiver of executive privilege is a myopic, political maneuver designed to maintain the support of its political rivals and is not based on any discernible legal principle. In fact, the Biden administration's unprincipled political accommodation is directly contrary to long-standing Supreme Court precedent that information subject to executive privilege deserves the greatest protection consistent with the fair administration of justice. Nevertheless, this waiver is irrelevant insofar as the committee's request serves no valid legislative purpose and is thus unconstitutional. As it relates to any materials being sought in situations like this, where fundamental privileges and constitutional issues are at stake and where a committee has declined to grant sufficient time to conduct a full review, there is a long-standing bipartisan tradition of protective assertions of executive privilege designed to ensure the ability to make a final assertion, if necessary, over some or all of the requested material. In the event this court does not declare the requests invalid and unconstitutional, this protective assertion will ensure President Trump's ability to decide whether to make any further conclusive assertions of privilege following a full review of all of the requested materials. In sum, plaintiff files this action requesting that the court invalidate the committee's requests and enjoin the archivist from turning over the records in question. At a bare minimum. The court should enjoin the archivist from producing any potentially privileged records until President Trump is able to conduct a full privilege review of all of the requested materials. Plaintiff incorporates all prior allegations. Wherefore, Plaintiff asks this court to enter judgment in his favor and to provide the following relief. 1. A declaratory judgment that the committee's requests are invalid and unenforceable under the Constitution and laws of the United States. 2. In the alternative, a declaration that the Presidential Records Act is an unconstitutional violation of separation of powers and is void ab initio. 3. A preliminary and permanent injunction in joining the committee including Chairman Thompson from taking any actions to enforce the requests, from imposing sanctions for non-compliance with the requests, and from inspecting, using, maintaining, or disclosing any information obtained as a result of the requests. 4. A preliminary and permanent injunction in joining the archivist and NARA from producing the requested information. 5. In the alternative to the above, 
a preliminary injunction enjoining the archivist and NARA from producing the requested information, and enjoining the committee and Chairman Thompson from taking any actions to enforce the requests, until President Trump has had sufficient opportunity to conduct a comprehensive review of all records the archivist intends to produce before any presidential record is produced to the committee. 6. Plaintiffs' Reasonable Costs and Expenses, Including Attorneys' Fees, As Permitted by Law, and 7. Such other and further relief as the court may deem just proper. Trump breaks silence on Colin Powell with blistering statement, made big mistakes on Iraq and famously, so called weapons of mass destruction. Former President Donald Trump broke his silence on the passing of Colin Powell with a blistering statement. Trump said, Wonderful to see Colin Powell, who made big mistakes on Iraq and famously, so called weapons of mass destruction, be treated in death so beautifully by the fake news media. Hope that happens to me someday. He was a classic Reno, if even that, always being the first to attack other Republicans. He made plenty of mistakes, but anyway, may he rest in peace," Colin's family said, General Colin L. Powell, former U.S. Secretary of State and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, passed away this morning due to complications from COVID-19. We have lost a remarkable and loving husband, father, grandfather and a great American. We want to thank the medical staff at Walter Reed National Medical Center for their care and treatment. George Bush said, Laura and I are deeply saddened by the death of Colin Powell. He was a great public servant, starting with his time as a soldier during Vietnam. Many presidents relied on General Powell's counsel and experience. He was National Security Advisor under President Reagan. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff under my father and President Clinton, and Secretary of State during my administration. He was such a favorite of presidents that he earned the Presidential Medal of Freedom, twice. He was highly respected at home and abroad. And most important, Colin was a family man and a friend. Laura and I send Alma and their children our sincere condolences as they remember the life of a great man. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said that the world lost one of the greatest leaders that we have ever witnessed. A man who was respected around the globe. Ari Fleischer said Powell had such an uplifting approach to his job and life. Always laughing, always happy, he had a hard job but he always carried it out with a can-do, upbeat approach. Dot he treated everyone he met with respect and kindness. I will miss him, Fleischer added. New statement from President Trump exclamation mark. President Trump has been hard at work, pushing for endorsements of candidates who will stand up for the interests of this country, not China's interests, and not the interests of fat cat globalists like Bill Gates. His latest call is for Wisconsin Congressman Sean Duffy to run for governor of the state. It remains to be seen whether or not Duffy will take on Democrat Tony Evers, but perhaps President Trump's encouragement was just the nudge he needed. Here's what President Trump had to say about Duffy, working hard to get very popular and capable former Congressman Sean Duffy of Wisconsin to run for governor. He would be fantastic. A champion athlete, Sean loves the people of Wisconsin, and would be virtually unbeatable. Former President Donald Trump announced Saturday he is pushing for former Representative Sean Duffy, our WIS, to run in Wisconsin's 2022 gubernatorial race against Democrat Governor Tom Evers. The endorsement caught the eye of Newsmax. He and his wife Rachel both entered into the limelight when they first appeared together on MTV's Real World. Dot Although Wisconsin has swayed Republican in the past, as former GOP Governor Scott Walker served there from 2011 to 2019, the race could be tight, 
according to Cook Political Reports. Cook Political Reports rated Wisconsin in early October as lean Democrat. Milwaukee Journal Sentinel provided some details, it's unclear whether Duffy is even considering the idea, but Trump's statement could signal hurdles for Cleefish as she works to unify the Republican grassroots with whom Trump remains popular. Duffy, born in Hayward, has about $2 million in his federal campaign account, according to a recent Federal Elections Commission filing.